Okay, so I'm back again. Uh, I will be chairing the next session. Unfortunately, the, the speaker couldn't attend the conference, and so uh, he sent in a recording, which we're going to play. Um, the, the talk is by Michael Wodinski, and he's going to talk about Python security best practices uh, and going to go through a lot of these things that you have to consider in everyday programming to make sure that uh, your code is secure and you don't make the, you know, at least not the most common mistakes. <clears throat> Uh, so I think this will be a very interesting talk, something that, that everybody will basically have to, you know, adhere to and watch. And uh, so, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think that the um, speaker is, not, is also not going to be able to join the uh, Q&A. So we are just going to play the, um, the recording. You can still uh, put questions into the chat. I will record those, and perhaps we can find some way to get the speaker to answer those questions, maybe in the breakout room or something later on. Or I can help. Uh, maybe I can answer some questions. OK, let's take it away. Hello, my name is Michał Wodyński. I'm Python developer, and today I will be presenting a talk about Python security best practices. Um, I will be not attending your Python uh, uh, live, so I've just made a video of my talk. So I will, if you have any, if you will have any questions, just um, send me in mail in the in uh, on this address, Defend Programming Euro Python 2021. Uh, at protonmail.com and I will answer uh, your questions if you have any time. Uh, okay, so let's begin the talk. Few words, few words about me. I'm uh, currently I'm working in a graphite, uh, which is project related to the uh, creating recommendation for the uh, for the gamers of the. Uh, hazard games. Uh, on daily basis I'm interested in security, especially in Python, and good quality enthusiast. Uh, currently I'm working only with AWS and Python, and I've made many projects related to machine learning on this platform. Few words about the agenda. I will tell few words about uh, hackers uh, then uh, I will uh, just uh, briefly talk about uh, OWASP top 10 and um, we'll be talking about input uh, injection and how to prevent it uh, also we'll see issues uh, with reading uh, files like XML, pickle, YAML and then I will uh, tell you about assert statements and uh, some unexpected behavior of the Python. Um, then I will uh, talk about uh, issues with temporary files and tools that can uh, detect uh, those issues. Okay, so let's begin. A few words about hackers. Uh, in previous decades, hacker uh, is it was a uh, it was a person that uh, was good in programming. Now it can be anyone. It can be a just a server, some young uh, person that is testing Kali Linux or Shodan IO and just checking checking what uh, can get from the results. So uh, everything changed. The aim of the hacker can be just hacking the website, getting the algorithm, uh, maybe uh, some uh, metadata from the word, which is uh, storing information about where the uh, file was stored previously. And uh, it can be some good uh, start for the attacker to know where to, sh where to find certain documents. Also, it can be sometimes men by uh, social techniques, but it's not the aim of this lecture. 
Um, and that's all about hackers. Sometimes bugs are happening <laughs> uh, by accident because on every uh, 100 lines we made 200, uh, 20 bucks, so it can happen. Uh, it can happen just by mistake. Okay, so let's move to our input injection um, uh, and the overview of the OWASP. So, in this talk, I will be just uh, going through, let's say, uh, issues that can be found in uh, here uh, on OWASP top 10 uh, input inje uh, injection. Generally, it can be SQL, it can be XML path injection, uh, shell injection. There is many types of the, uh, injections. Um, also, we see that XML issues are also on the top, and um, insecure deserialization, uh, which I will be uh, talking today. So. Uh, I will be talking about most recent because o OWASP top 10 is not updated every year. It's updated from time to time. So let's go to input injection. And here uh, we have a function that is compressing the file. And we, it is written in the way that is accepting everything from the user. And just to prevent uh, doing this, uh, so uh, printing uh, hashes of the passwords, which can be taken then uh, to the Raybone table and just uh, recognized the pure password, and then mail. Uh, in this case, it can, it can be easily uh, run because uh, there is no any quoting and validation. So the solution for that is just never trusting of uh, what user is uh, giving us and we have to always make sure that we we are doing exactly what we are expecting uh, and not uh, what user expect can do. So in case uh, of that, we can just uh, manually quoting everything what we uh, are getting from the user and validating it. Or we can, uh, in case of uh, shell libraries, we can use shellx library uh, which is uh, which has a function quote for uh, quoting what user uh, gave. Okay, let's move to the XML. Uh, XMLs are very tricky because of the um, elastic uh, way of uh, providing them, writing them and all features that are related to the XML files, and I will shortly describe all of them. Um, general, generally, XML uh, files uh, can bypass the firewall, firewall and uh, find some resources that can be, and reach some resources that can be found by, uh, from the internet. It can make a DDoS on the, uh, DDoS on the server, on other uh, service that is uh, communicating with um, by simply exhausting the resources, basically memory. Uh, it can uh, be used for uh, just uh, gaining the IP address that is uh, where it's sent from, where it's uh, actually open, this XML. Uh, and it sometimes allows for sending emails or any other uh, dirty things. Okay, so let's go particularly to um, any uh, any ver uh, vulnerability. Uh, first um, thing is a billion laughs or exponential entity expansion, uh, which is a attack by entity, uh, which basically is creating one small entity and then it's uh, recursively repeating it. And uh, then uh, taking it to the memory, it's just killing the application. Uh, other way to doing this is just creating one big entity and just repeat it many times. And it is called quadratic blow entity expansion. 
uh, there is uh, also option to just uh, point to the certain entity remotely or, lo or local uh, by uh, by the feature of the XML. So we can just point to the to the some website and take XML and load it with the entities assigned them. And also uh, it can happen uh, on the server side where the attacker just by somehow simply uh, upload such XML file. Uh, there is also option for uh, DDD retrieval, which is uh, pretty the same as previous, and it can uh, contain any of the previous attacks. Uh, also, uh, XML uh, in their implementation, uh, there are some issues related to the namespaces and uh, name recognition. Um, generally, uh, Square uh, there is used uh, algorithm Square uh, M, but in some uh, parsers there is there are some hash tables that are uh, doing in the uh, linear, uh, uh, but they are exposed for the uh, collision attacks, and the performance can go to. Uh, square N. So be, be aware of that. Uh, there is there are also processing instruction uh, which are running other uh, XMLs. Uh, even worse is that XMLs can be compressed using the uh, gzip or Elzema, which is uh, better than gzip. Uh, and can go and do more more harm. Uh, in this case, uh, XML ERPC lib can be decompressed, uh, so it's vulnerable. LXML um, is uh, well designed, and it's dealing with a big um, compression, but it's not protected. Um, from the compression bombs, so be aware of that. And Sax library is the most safe. I will discuss all the uh, uh, parser libraries in few uh, slides later. Um, we have uh, also issue with the injection where we can pass the XPath. So again, we have to validate what this user is passing to us uh, by quoting or by just uh, using the um, the function appropriately. So uh, not just uh, by string format, but by, by passing the parameter and the uh, uh, library will make validation. Um, also, we can include other files, not necessarily XML files. And uh, we shouldn't do that if we, uh, we are pointing to untrusted sources. Uh, libxml2 supports its include and there is no way to uh, access allowed directories. Uh, XML can be combined from schema and in this case we can have all previous issues. So um, uh, entities, we can have um, some local or remote XMLs, uh, DDT retrieval, and basically all, all the cases. Uh, even worse is that we can uh, go to the, uh, we can use XLT language, which is used for transforming XML to XML or XML to HTML. And in this case, this language uh, can uh, read, write files, uh, access Java files or we can script in JSON, for example. And here is an example of the code that is running CMD on Windows and just uh, running some command. So this is the very uh, serious case. Okay, let's go to summary. 
these points are regarding to the table that I'm just putting to the uh, that I'm putting later so we can uh, check which number is in which uh, cell in this uh, table so uh, LXML is protected from billion laughs attacks uh, libxml and lxml is uh, vulnerable to gzip compression bombs but is well designed uh, xml e3 raises uh, parser error in if the entity appears uh, also minidom doesn't expand entities and genshi also doesn't support anti entity expansion uh, and libraries with the uh, 6 and 7 uh, 6 is which is a feature of xinclude and this library may be vulnerable for that and also uh, there are other features that can be exploitable so let's go here and it's not looking very good so be aware of that uh, that if you use, uh, if you are planning to run XML files, it is just uh, uh, your responsibility to choose the library that is appropriate for your case and just not uh, uh, and just not remove uh, and, ju and just remove cases that you are not using. The most safe library is in this case is Genshi parser that is almost safe for everything uh, but in some cases you can use also other uh, other libraries uh, this table is going through you can just go through and make sure that this uh, this available here yeah so you can you can see which library for what attack is uh, uh, exposed for one thing is uh, Genshi exposed for X include so be aware that in this case you will have to deal with that um, but also I know that many of you are using already some of the parsers for some reasons you've chose those <laughs> so you can uh, basically add uh, uh, use def used XML, which is a library for uh, fixing uh, those parsers, and in case element tree, it is uh, just repa replacing the the object and make it it more safe. And I will just uh, briefly show it on the Python. So, in this case. I will be loading such file. It is quite big. I think I will, I will <laughs> be not breaking my uh, own computer. So this is uh, one of the last, let's say, entities that I can handle in current uh, situation with the presenting and recording. Uh, so if you look at this, it will take some time um, to. show that I guess a second We have it. Uh, so in this case, if I run it, you see that it's processing it, processing, and it's not quite big file. So if you compress it or make it some in other dirty things, you will make it break. Uh, but in case of diffuse XML, we just simply receive entities forbidden. So be aware of that. Make sure what you want exactly do with your XMLs. Use uh, def use XML if you're already uh, using some libraries, and you should be more safe. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. 
If you have any more questions, there is a project Defuse XML where I uh, took this uh, table and you can read more about it. Also, you can uh, check the uh, Python 3 documentation about these issues. Okay, let's move on to pickles. Uh, pickles are generally uh, binary objects in Python for storing data. Uh, but to be honest, you can store everything in pickle. Uh, it can be even whole project or <laughs> even program or small program, whatever. Uh, you can break your code, and there are many ways to do that. So we have the pickle uh, library that is basically can do what I mentioned already. We have a shelf library, which is a basic library uh, for storing uh, binary data in the key value way. Uh, there's a Marshall library, which is alternative to the pickle and it's older. Um, not going for too deep details, the difference uh, is that pickle is uh, saving uh, data in a different way, uh, more optimized. And that's the the main difference. And there is also just JSON pickle, which is basically for storing JSON. But to be honest, you can store everything by JSON JSON pickle. So it is alternative for the pickle. Okay, let's see how uh, we can uh, create exploit in, uh, by using pickle. Um, pickle is combined with such comments in first line we see that uh, it's loading uh, built-ins. Next command it's uh, evaluating the command that is below, in this case printing. And uh, the last command is just calling what we had previously and pushing to the stack. And that's all. This will be uh, executing on your site and if you are loading uh, data science uh, pickles or other pickles, you can just uh, break your program. Other way to do that is just implementing the class and the reduce magic method, reduce magic method, which is uh, returning, which is uh, running uh, when the load uh, method is uh, executed. So, case is that uh, this reduce method is returning uh, the module that we want to run with the function. And the parameter for this, well, in this uh, for this uh, function. In this case, it is running basically, let's say, remote bash or something like that uh, on the server side that you can connect to. And so there is some ways to to investigate uh, pickle if you if you if you experience something like that. Uh, we can use the pickle pickle tools which will show you what exactly is in the pickle and what we'll be doing step by step. And there is also the small, small library Ficklink, which is uh, basically is for creating bad pickles <laughs> and checking what is inside pickle. Currently um, checking the uh, whether the pickle is okay, it's not working here. So it is interesting because uh, it is very easy to create uh, a pickle by it. Um, so how we can deal with that? Uh, we cannot trust pickles. This is the, the first rule. The second rule <laughs> is just to sign pickle that we want to trust and check the signature when we are loading that. Okay, let's uh, quickly show uh, this in the terminal. Okay. Okay, so I've just prepared uh, uh, let's run bad server that is not checking the uh, the signing. And I have just prepared some pickles uh, uh, I will be using this uh, send email pickle, uh, which actually what it's doing, it's uh, taking the 
uh, netstat output and sending to the uh, mail trap, which is the provider for testing mails. So uh, let's run it. Make request. Um, method post. Uh, Okay, give a second. Okay, I will just go back. Yeah, file path. There is a need for file path. Okay, so I will be just sending it. Okay, let's wait for a second because that's that command takes some time. So this is okay. It succeed, and if you go here, we have some process information. I will uh, okay. I will show you on the browser. If we go here in the inbox, I have my process information. I will not be showing that because I'm doing my own computer. So believe me, there is a nets that there. Uh, I will be basically show you how this uh, send email pickle look like. It's just a big piece of code that is sending all of the necessary information. And it's just dumping it to the such pickle and loading to the memory of the of the server. Okay, so just going to the uh, terminal back and we can go and see uh, that good server will just simply not accept such pickle uh, because I'm making here the check of the digest. So let's let's take a look here. So bad server it was just loading everything and was happy what he gets. The good server, um, when uh, was accepting something, it was making the digest and checking with the last di uh, digest that uh, was created previously by get. So in case of get, it uh, it will be working. So let's show it. Let's get good pickle from which which will be signed. Okay, rec people, we receive that, and let's send it. Yeah, success. Start processing. So he basically checked the signing. It was okay. So it was doing what was expected. So let's look uh, into. Uh, some uh, deep of the pickle, and here we can see pickle tools, and let's see the send email pickle. So we see here that something bad is happening here that will be loaded. And it's base 64 encoded. If we use a uh, thick link, it will show the same. Okay. Uh, also, in case of and C pickle. In this case, it will show what will be happening in the reduce, so it's more convenient to see what will happen. And finally, I will show you uh, how to create a new bad pickle with the thick link. Okay, so we have it. Let's see with the thick link new, and here with the pretty. And now we can also put
put something bad here. We can inject to this new pickle a new thing and it will be injected. So besides of the print, we get the running the netstat inside. So there is a many tools for making that and be aware, be aware of that. Okay, so that's all for pickles. Let's go to the presentations. And now let's move. Uh, okay, the uh, topic of the uh, pickle is very big. If you want to uh, go inside and see some uh, uh, even worse thing, <laughs> you, you can just uh, read all of the sources, the uh, documentation, and so on to see what uh, can go wrong more with the pickles. Um, let's switch to the yams. So with the yams, there is not so bad. Uh, two years ago, there was a problem because YAML was loading everything what uh, was inside the YAML. YAML files uh, are uh, constructed in this way that can run every command that you put there. So, for example, netstat, sending emails, etc., etc. And the, uh, uh, in the version until version five. Uh, PyYAML library was uh, uh, loading uh, unsecurely uh, YAML files. But after this version, uh, load is using the safe load. So there is no problem. So the only thing you have to remember just to update your libraries, and it's not only the case with PyYAMLs, but all uh, libraries that you are using. Uh, developers are switching many security issues. But be aware of, of uh, also of that that you will may have you can may have uh, some uh, case that you will save uh, will use unsafe load which will uh, make a lot of issues uh, because uh, it will load everything maybe you will need some comments from the YAML etc etc so be aware of that if you want to read more uh, here is the PyAM uh, project and also some uh, old uh, YAML uh, issues relate, uh, related to the YAMLs. So let's go to the uh, assert statements. So the case is that uh, in some cases like contract programming some programmers are using um, assert statements for ensuring that uh, to the function everything is uh, going as expected so it's checking the output and then checking the state after the execution of the function and this is quite good but the problem with the asserts is that uh, many of the Python projects uh, Python projects are run with the optimization uh, which can happen in, uh, in cloud or in your own projects and here is the case um, in optimized uh, mode uh, dash o uh, it will uh, just skip all asserts so we'll be not checking everything if you want to make contract programming you have to use some other way maybe if else statements uh, use asserts only in tests and here is the screenshot of this case so uh, we have the function that is uh, taking something from the uh, argument and it's checking the assert. If we run uh, Python in this way, it will just raise the assertion error, which is okay. But if we run uh, Python with the optimized option, it will uh, skip the assert statement completely and everything will be uh, running as it is. So be aware of that. Also, there are some issues related to the temporary files. And, and basically, temporary files are used uh, by uh, some applications to store something and read it back. 
So changing these uh, temporary files can make uh, uh, problems in the behavior of the application that will uh, change this behavior of the application completely. Um, so in such case, uh, we should use uh, MK uh, secure temp. So we're making secure temporary file. In such case, uh, to the file that is created by this application is added a sticky bit. In Linux, basically it means that it will be edited only uh, by this application and it cannot be edited by any other user. Uh, so this is how we can uh, handle that. We have some tools that uh, we can use for um, for uh, checking all vulnerabilities. I recommend Snake.io uh, and Bandit. Snake.io is a website where you can find many vulnerabilities and check your repo against all uh, vulnerabilities that you are you, you are facing. And also is the script Bandit that is. Uh, basically what he's doing is checking the, your code and appearance of certain modules like XML, assert and everything to know, uh, to show you that you are using something that is dangerous and you have to make sure that uh, what you are using um, is uh, used in a safe mode. If you if you make sure that it's okay, you can just skip it in the in the bandit, and if it if it's happened again in somewhere other place, bandit will tell you about it again. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. And um, if you have any uh, questions. You are welcome to write it to my email, Defend Programming Euro Python 2021 at protonmail.com, and I will answer it after uh, after the conference. And uh, be secure and enjoy programming. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you here are some more readings if you want to see and see you on your Python next year, probably live. Okay, so that was to talk uh, on security best practices. He covered lots and lots of uh, things that are very interesting and that you definitely need to pay attention to when, when writing code. Uh, on the topic of XML, XML is, uh, you always have to consider it being, you know, dangerous uh, you know, content or potentially dangerous content. You really have to trust the sources that you're getting the XML from. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's typically better to use other formats like JSON um, if you want to write any questions, then I've posted the email address uh, into the chat, so you can write directly uh, and to uh, Michael and then ask. Um, I will also post the few questions that were raised in the chat uh, to him, so maybe he can send back uh, some answers, and then I will post them somewhere um, into the maybe into this chat or maybe uh, you know in in the hallway. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for listening and thank you very much to Michael for, for giving the talk. Um, next will be the keynote by David Beasley and we will take a short break until then. Thank you.